Okay, hi, so welcome to this video on the origins of life on Earth and fossils, right? So fossils are things which provide us evidence for the origins of life on Earth and how life has changed uh, during the lifespan of Earth. All right, so the, uh, the Earth was thought to be uh, first made, if you like, or it first came to be at around about 4,500 million years ago, right? So, the Earth is expected to be that old. So, it's about four and a half thousand million years, or 4.5 billion years, if you wanted to quote it that way. Now, it's expected to take around about a billion years um, before any life was seen on Earth. Okay, so around about, if you're using the same units, 3,500 million years ago. Okay, so around about 3,500 million years ago, that's where you started to see life, right? So, I'll just label this. This is when the Earth was first formed, and life arrived on Earth, if you like, 3,500 million years ago. Now, there's argument about how life actually started on Earth. So, obviously, you have religious arguments, okay? But you also have um, arguments as to whether life just uh, basically happened as a result of the elements present on Earth, or whether life actually arrived on Earth from other planets. So, if a... Um, a meteor or something like that hit the earth and there are things on that meteor from other planets which were alive then that could have brought life to the planet those things by the way are very very hard to prove um, for or against because it was so long ago there isn't really evidence um, or conclusive evidence to, to, to say sorry which one uh, or which theory is actually correct however something which is um, extremely important in terms of evidence is the fossil so we have fossils now rather than say how life started they tell us how life has progressed because we can actually see fossilized remains of different organisms and compare those to the organisms that exist today and based on how old the fossils are we can see differences in those organisms and how the organisms may have actually evolved over time all right and so first of all what is a fossil Okay, so fossil is basically the remains of organisms preserved in rocks. Okay, quite a simple definition, but a fossil is basically part of an organism or even an entire organism. Okay, let me just, there we go. That's uh, just not very good. That will have to do. So, parts of an organism which are found in a rock. Sometimes you have almost an entire organism could be preserved uh, and found in a rock. Now, the way... Let me just scroll down here. So, the way that fossils are made actually varies. So, fossils can be formed in a number of ways. Okay. So, first of all, you have parts of organisms which just do not decay easily. Okay. So, parts of organism... Which does not decay easily will be preserved. For example, okay, e.g., uh, the shells of organisms. Okay, the shells are really hard and they do not break down easily. Not as easy as flesh at all. Just like uh, teeth, bones, things like that. They're um, living things or parts of living things which actually are really tough to break down. Right? They have jobs which uh, require them to be tough, and therefore they actually last way longer than the rest of the organism. Okay, so I'm going to say, e.g., bones, okay, shells. You also have claws of some animals, etc., etc., right? So, but you know the sorts of things you're talking about. They're the things which are really hard. You could, you could say the tusks of uh, elephants, for example, right? They're made of ivory. They're really tough to break down as well. Okay, so that sort of thing will actually just last longer than everything else in rocks because it takes a long time for them to break down. Now, another reason for a fossil forming could be that there are conditions which cause decay to be really slow or to not happen at all. Okay, so we can say that conditions okay, for decay are not right. For example, decay occurs in warm, moist conditions. Now, if you have an organism frozen in ice, then that is not a warm or a moist condition. Yep, those conditions, sorry, are not warm or moist. And so therefore, it's going to take way, way, way longer for an organism to decay, or it just won't decay at all, 
right? So say example, ice. Yep, or you could have really high pressure underground. Yep, so I can, I'm can just gonna say underground. Okay, maybe there's a lack of oxygen, maybe there's a lack of moisture, maybe it's too hot, and so therefore decay is not going to happen. Okay, another example is when um, parts of an organism are actually replaced by minerals. Okay, so parts of the organism are actually replaced by minerals. What that means is as, um, so I should really say here, during decay. Right, so basically, if an organism is decaying and, de and decay is actually happening, okay, so you have conditions which allow decay, but while decay is happening, parts of the organism are actually replaced by other substances. Okay, by minerals, we mean things like calcium, we mean things like sodium. Okay, things which weren't actually present in the organism to start with could replace um, those parts of the organism that are decaying, but obviously if they replace them, they're going to have the same shape. So what you have left is not actually the organism's remains, okay, but it is uh, the, f the shape of the organism, but it's made of something else. So you have uh, your calcium or your sodium or whatever it is, but it looks like what the organism or originally looked like, and then that is preserved. And so lastly, you can also have things that organisms leave behind, right, and we call those traces. Okay, so traces of organisms are preserved. Okay, an example of that is if an organism leaves a footprint, and then that footprint, for whatever reason, uh, is preserved. So nothing comes and destroys that footprint, and then eventually uh, that is fossilized in the ground, and then it ends up in a rock. And so you have footprints in rocks, which tell you a lot about the organism uh, originally. So I'll say, e.g., footprints. Okay. It could also be other things like the habitats of the organism. So if they've made a nest or they've made a burrow, um, then those things can also be fossilized and they tell you a lot about the organism that made them. Okay, now, this um, the way that I've described this, you may be thinking that, well, why don't we know everything about every organism in history? Well, fo like fossil conditions or conditions for fossilization to occur are actually quite specific and they're not often achieved. Okay, so it actually takes quite very, uh, quite specific conditions for a fossil to be produced. Most of an organism may be soft, and so most of that does not happen. So they decay, and over time we lose all evidence of that particular organism. For example, if you think about microorganisms, right, like bacteria, for example, or slightly bigger uh, fungi and things like that, they're completely soft, right? They're, there's no hard component to those organisms and so therefore fossilized remains of those things are very 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 hard to find um, and therefore we lose uh, records of those okay so i'll say that fossil remains they're rare because most uh most remains have actually decayed and one other thing is that geological activity so for example earthquakes uh tsunamis things like that they actually destroy fossilized remains uh, which are found in the ground so the fact that you have movement of land that is actually very disruptive and fossils are fragile and so those things can actually be damaged right so geological activity can destroy fossil remains and this leads to um, the fact that we now have incomplete incomplete fossil evidence Right, what that means is we do not have complete records of all the organisms that have existed on Earth. Uh, some might still be out there, and there probably is quite a lot out there which we have not yet discovered underground. But some have probably been lost forever because they've been destroyed by geological activity, or the remains of those organisms have just decayed over a long period of time. You can think that also as climate changes, if fossil remains, for example, are frozen in ice, when if that ice melts, then that fossil has gone, right? So if things are preserved in ice, then we don't want that ice to melt because we want to find those fossils. All right, and so here are a couple of photos of uh, fossils. So this is one. This is obviously of a fish that has lived in water, but its remains have been fossilized in rock. Now this looks like uh, some of the remains have been lost. Maybe the bones uh, have not decayed or anything yet. And so 
that's why you have this fossil which looks really really fragile in comparison here is another kind of fossil and it's quite a common type of fossil that you've probably seen before and this is where the the entire organism has basically been replaced right so uh, the the outer shell of this organism has been mineralized right and so minerals have swapped into that shell and have taken the same shape but this is now actually a rock it's not the original organism itself it's now the rock because the mineral ions have uh, basically swapped as the organism has decayed so the organism has decayed mineral ions have replaced them in the same shape as the organism but what you have there is a solid rock all right now looking at these fossils and obviously loads and loads of other fossils tells us a lot about how organisms have changed over time. Some organisms have evolved, some of them are pretty similar to what they used to be, but some of them have completely disappeared off the face of the earth. That process is known as extinction. All right, so extinction is when a species no longer exists, right? It's where all individuals of one species have died out. And I'll just write that here. All right, so all individuals of a species have died. All right, now there are a number of things which can lead to extinction, right? It's not just one thing that can cause it. It's loads of things that can cause it. A lot of the time, it's other species can cause it, right? And I'm going to write that here, actually, as a subheading. Okay, so other species can cause a species to become extinct. And that can happen in a number of ways as well. And the first one is disease. Okay, so disease... Example of that being pathogenic bacteria. All right, so a pathogen is a uh, an organism which is going to cause disease. And so if you have an, a bacteria which causes a particular disease that targets a species, if that disease spreads through the entire species and kills all the individuals, then that means that that organism has effectively become extinct. Okay, so the pathogen has actually caused that organism to become extinct. And so that is how another species can cause a separate species to become extinct, right? One species being the pathogen, the other one being the host or the target organism, which has been killed. Okay, another one would be predators. Okay, so if a new predator is introduced uh, to an environment or to an ecosystem, and let's say that that ecosystem is the only place where a certain species exists, and that is very, very common um, throughout nature. A lot of the time you have certain species which only exist in one geographical location. Okay, so a new predator, predator could wipe out all individuals of a species. All right, now that could be directly, as in the predator just eats all of the organisms, or it could be that they eat most of the organisms, and then the ones which are left are struggling to survive because the population is so small. And then other predators could come in and, and eat them, etc., etc. It doesn't have to be as black and white as one predator eats everything. It could just be more predators, so if another predator has been introduced, the fact that you now have more predators for that organism means that it's a combination of all those things lead to its extinction. All right, another one is competitors. Competitors. Okay, and so they are not organisms which will directly hunt um, organisms of a certain species, but they might come into the same environment and they're trying to eat the same food or they're trying to uh, inhabit the same areas. So let's say, for example, you had two separate types of birds. Both birds want to make nests up the trees and so they're competing with each other, right? And if the competitor that's introduced is better adapted to the environment, that they could outcompete the other species and cause them to become extinct, right? So it could be competition for food, okay, or habitat, right? That can lead to extinction. Okay, things which are not other organisms which can lead to extinction are also things like natural disasters. Okay, natural disasters. And that's one of the theories for how the dinosaurs went extinct. Okay, natural disasters. They can lead to widespread death in one particular place, right? 
So if you had a particularly bad earthquake or a particularly bad volcanic eruption, which completely wiped out one ecosystem, that ecosystem could be the only uh, place where you can find a certain species. And so that natural disaster could actually cause that species to become extinct. All right, and lastly, you have um, natural changes over time or natural adaptations over time of a species. Okay, so the species can actually change. And so I'm going to write adaptations. And if those adaptations are drastic enough, they can actually cause um, a new species to form. And so that's what we call speciation, right? But it still leads to the extinction of the previous species. Okay, so I'm going to put in brackets here speciation. Right? For example, human, we have um, a common ancestor with chimpanzees, and that common ancestor okay, may no longer exist because, obviously, it's evolved separately into chimpanzees, human beings, and other things as well, right? And obviously, therefore, the original species went extinct, but new species have arisen from that um, original species, right? That common ancestor. And so that is still... Um, and I put in brackets here as well, actually, evolution. Okay, just so you don't get confused. Evolution can lead to, and often does lead to, the loss of the original species. Okay, which means that that species has, by definition, become extinct. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. I hope that made sense. So the fossil evidence uh, tells us what has happened to certain species over time. You need to know what a fossil is and how fossils uh, are actually formed and the reason why we don't have a complete history or a complete fossil record for every organism that ever existed right because obviously those fossils are actually require specific conditions uh, to be produced and they can be broken down over time um, and obviously that means that we don't have a complete record all right so you also need to know how organisms become extinct uh, either it's by other organisms or as a result of other organisms or it's not it's a, as a result of nature okay but all those things that i've just mentioned lead to extinction so if you do have any questions on any of that please feel free to post a comment in the box below or send me a direct email by using the link in the box below um, but as usual please do like and subscribe because it really does help me out and i look forward to seeing you in the next video